Hey Libra Ascendant, it's Michelle, your Practical Priestess here at Divinely Genuine. Let me make some adjustments here. Hope you guys are doing good. We're here to do your tarot reading for the lunar eclipse on Friday the 27th of July 2018. So I did say Libra Ascendant. This is not for Libra Sun or Moon. Um, it's for Ascendant so that I can offer some astrology into the tarot reading as well. So if you don't know your Ascendant sign, you'll need to get your, your uh, birth time and Google your natal birth chart. You can um, pull it up at astro.com your natal birth chart, and you'll enter your birth date, place of birth, and birth time. Um, you can, you know, get your birth time, ask, or ask your family. Uh, your birth certificate should say it. Some do not. You could find it maybe in a birth announcement or even a baby book. Um, and then after you do that, oh, I'm sorry. Let me turn on some more lights. Give me a second. All right, so after you uh, go online and Google your natal birth chart, this um, kind of a will will come up, right? I know you can't see it real good on camera, but a will will come up, and this middle line is the ascendant and descendant, where the sun was ascending and descending at the time of your birth. So this first triangle on the lower half of the circle Whatever zodiac that is in this first house is your ascendant. There's also a graph at the bottom of those charts that will tell you the ascendant name, okay? All right, so Libra, oh, sorry, Libra ascendants. Um, I'm going to plug this up real quick, actually. For you guys, or us, because this is myself as well, uh, the lunar eclipse is happening for us in the fifth house, which is home to Leo, ruled by the sun. And um, that's where we have Aquarius. Um, the fifth house represents our passions, our desires. <coughs> it represents uh, true love, romance, children the heart space, happiness, okay? Um, yeah, so that's that for us. I have communed with spirit, shuffled the decks, and I'm ready to cut them. Um, oh, I would like to mention, too, if you have any planets in your natal birth chart that are like from zero to 10 degrees, you'll be affected even more so, depending on which planet of how it will affect you um, because it's happening at four degrees Aquarius um, so yeah that'll bring about a more intense thing um, also lunar eclipses we will definitely feel as anything happening with the moon we feel I feel like that's a little better let's do it like that um, yeah, like we feel the full moon and the new moon because it, it affects our mind, which then affects our emotions. Okay. Um, and if you guys are interested in any readings, I'm offering some uh, readings in my astrology school at divinelygenuine.com. I've got a couple on cell like Scorpio, Jupiter and Scorpio transit. Um, which will be, um, Jupiter will be in Scorpio until November, so if you want to take advantage of that now. And, um, I've just created a new, um, project, <laughs> and it's becoming a pretty big one. I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, and it's just funny because I have that, I have the moon in Aquarius, my moon in Aquarius, and there's that like lightning bolt ideas, genius ideas, you know, like, 
and that's kind of how it came about, but um, it's a deep-rooted thing that I've always known I would do. But anyway, so if you are a light worker or, you know, woman of God, a spiritual woman, I've created and am creating a women's light worker empowerment group so that we can empower each other um, and do some community outreach to shine that light. Uh, it will be in the physical here in Houston to do like, you know, most of the things we'll be doing, but I'll, I'm trying to create as well an online version since a lot of us light workers are being united like through uh, social media and we're all over the, the world. <laughs> so look for that. It's called the silver, look for the silver lining. Um, I've created the Facebook group so you could like that and stay updated through that um, Facebook page or um, or also at divinelygenuine.com I'll have things going on there about it as well as my Divinely Genuine Facebook page so hope to see you guys there and sorry guys it is just for women but if you know any women who um, are light workers and can use that unity and empowerment send them my way all right guys let's get into it Libra ascendance we've got the major Libra card of judgment Libra does rule judgment it does rule the justice system that's a major arcana card. Uh, let's see what book. And I am using the tarot by Bridget Reed and Colin Howard, who's the artist, as well as the Healing Fairy cards by Doreen Virtue. And I kind of feel like this was maybe better now. No. All right. So starting out with the Judgment card upright. Let's see what we have with that. Do, 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 do. Sorry, here we go. Okay, this card is also known as rejuvenation. Awesome. It symbolizes development, resolution, and release. Very awesome to hear. Very, very cool. Development, resolution, and release. That's really neat, being that it's happening in our um, the house that um, affects our passions and our heart's desire. Okay, moving right along, we've got the Eight of Pentacles. Pentacles do represent our value and self-worth as well as the monetary gain and resources reflected back to us. Let's see. And in this particular deck, it describes the pinnacles as symbolizing generosity, financial reward, success at work, and craftsmanship. Boop, boop. We'll take it. We shall take it. And this is the Eight of Pinnacles. This card predicts the need to progress with caution. It is a card of starting over, of doing something new, or a card of expansion. So we've got the develop, development here with the judgment card, and then we've got the eight of pentacles saying, um, proceed with caution, that something new is transpiring um, during a period of expansion. Apprenticeship can be scary or demoralizing, and it foretells, if not a tough period, a time of learning and mistakes, doubts, and just hard work. Yeah. So as you're starting these new projects, um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. What matters is that you're starting them and they're from your heart's um, deepest desires, you know. Like that project I was just mentioning of the women's group, like doing community outreach is a big deal. I mean, it seems like, you know, sure, I could just make it, you know, cleaning up a park. But if you really want to make an impact and help out, you know, how do you help homeless people? 
You know what I mean? The need is so great. So um, I could easily get, you know, discouraged by and have doubts, but no, it's important to me. It's important to my heart's desire. It's important to any light worker to spread the light where the darkness is to help others, right? Especially us Libras. Um, okay, so don't worry about making mistakes. It's how we learn, you know, it's all good. And don't doubt it. Just do what's important to you. Follow your heart. Then we've got a reversed Six of Cups. Okay, so now with the this deck, the reverse in a cup, leans towards uh, jealousy, pain, rejection, excessive love of luxury, and preoccupation with oneself. Cups are rolling in motion. Let's see the Six of Cups. This card represents happy feelings coming from the past and innocence, a word with many shades of meaning. You can be innocent in the strictly legal sense of lack of guilt. There are lots of possibilities that can apply to the Six of Cups depending on the situation. Hmm. So it seems to be kind of a karmic card. Happy feelings coming from the past. Innocence can take place but have many shades. Like someone can be found innocent only because there's a lack of proving that they're guilty. And then, you know, this is kind of an iffy card. It's kind of weird. And then we have it reversed. So that's going to put a bit of a block on that. Interesting. You know what I want, what I would like to do is I would like to get the book from this other deck and see what the meaning of Six of Cups is for this one. Just because that seems so kind of unclear to me. <laughs> so Cups, let's see, four, five, and six. So the cups in this Tarot Illuminati, which is what I usually use, is the pleasure of the sun child, youthful joy, simple pleasures in life, pure happiness, the inner child. It's a totally Leo vibe, which is the house that the lunar eclipse is affecting us in. It's the inner child returning to a simpler way of living, generosity of spirit, kindness and gentleness, emotional harmony. You're only as old as you feel, innocence and inexperience. Now, because it is reversed, there will be some blocks to that, to getting back to that generosity of spirit, kindness, the inner child, all of that. So as we're in the middle of this awesome reading, let me go back here again. What was that? Let's see, that's a pentacle. Um, it's basic, let's see, so rejuvenation, development, resolution, and release. And then we have the pentacle, starting something new, expansion, don't be afraid to make mistakes and don't doubt your path. And then we have the Six of Cups reversed. So, you know, things may not come right away of what we'd like to see. That happy place may not come right away. But we need to stay kind and faith um, as children do. Um, connect with our inner child so that we can manifest whatever new whatever new period of expansion we're um, happening upon during this lunar eclipse. We're in a time of developing and expanding. 
and that will that will get us to that happy place and inner joy and bliss. Um, where we can be generous with our spirit, but we have to remember we're developing, okay? It's a time of like apprenticeship. We're working and, and things that are worthy of your true desires and true happiness take time to build. It's not overnight, but also remember that you can tap into that. You can connect to your inner child. It's it is the card. It's just saying it's a little harder right now because you're building something. And how beautiful. The healing card that we got is kindness. So the six of cups mentioned kindness, but there was a block. So here's your reminder to just be kind. Be kind to others and you're then reflect. That's then reflected back to you. Let's see what the fairy book says kindness practice kindness in all your thoughts and deeds today toward yourself other people animals and the environment and watch the rewards that come your way we often refer to kindness as thoughtfulness yet kindness is more correctly described as lovefulness by drawing this card the fairies hand you the wonderful assignment for looking for opportunities to be kind today. This, this may mean under, undercover kindness in which you do anonymous good deeds, or it could mean being extra alert for strangers who could use a helpful hand or a thoughtful word. Kindness can also entail letting someone else win the argument or volunteering for a cause you truly believe in. By paying attention to the implications of every thought and action, you begin to develop a kindness habit. Yes. Your new energy of kindness attracts new loving friends into your sphere. As you practice kindness towards animals, plants, and the environment, you develop a closer relationship with nature. More, or I'm sorry, most important, when you are particularly kind toward yourself, by thinking about yourself compassionately, and by taking time out for yourself, you're rewarded with a sense of inner satisfaction and peace. Your affirmation, Libra Ascendance, is I am kind, thoughtful, and loving to myself and others. Remember this during this lunar eclipse, okay? Be kind. Just be kind and all the pieces are going to fit where they should. Woo! I love you guys. Have a good lunar eclipse. Peace.